So Arc Raiders is definitely popping off right now, and I've been really enjoying playing it as well. In particular, aside from the gameplay, I've been finding the world building, environmental design, lighting, and especially the awesome models for the robots, the Ark, just very captivating and inspiring to be immersed in and around. So anyways, I thought, how about we vibe out and we make some models from the game, we build some scenes and we just kind of get inspired together. I've done some videos and projects like this before, such as with Helldivers, and you guys like that series, so I thought that I'd bring that back here. Now the difference between this and Helldivers, the biggest difference is that, as far as I know, and to this point, there is not a archive Discord server where people are uploading models. What this means is that we have to create those models ourselves. This means that this video is going to have a pretty big emphasis on the modeling aspects and the modeling stages. But let's get right into this one and I'm just going to kind of commentate over what I'm working on. So as I say, the first stage is modeling. And however we do it, the best thing to do is always just to get started straight into it and put in the basic shapes. Just start with primitives. And then in this case, I want to start creating some of the key feature components that are going to help me to place and identify other ones. We just kind of want to start somewhere and then build off of that. And I'm building these completely out of scale because I'm just trying to build components individually right now and then we're going to bring them together and into proper scale soon. Now definitely you can do stuff like building a block out that encompasses the entire model first and I end up doing this with the legs before I start going in there and filling in all the details. But I would encourage you to focus on more micro goals. You just want to essentially create a little mini to-do list that you can be checking off with models that you're creating rather than trying to attack everything together and trying to get everything to the same high level of detail. Often better to just dive into whatever you can and just basically look at like what is the next key feature that I can work on and then you just want to grab that and roll with that essentially. That tends to be a good way to roll just because it helps you to keep momentum and momentum is a concept which a lot of other Blender YouTubers don't really talk about when it comes to modeling because it's not a hard skill, it's more of a soft skill, but you want to be keeping a certain velocity or pace with your modeling so that you're not getting burned out or just kind of like blocked, tired of like working on certain bits and then that will be more likely that you'll start and stop with your modeling. That's fine, it's fine to take breaks, but you want to be intentional about those breaks. You don't want it to be like you're taking a break because you were forced to, and I know that that's a lot of conceptual stuff that I'm talking about, but it is... It's about equally as important, if not more important, than the technical skills, which are something which are more consistently able to be honed and tuned to. In terms of the technical process for this, this is really just one big hard surface model, but with an organic shape overall. Like, it's key to remember, as similar with Hal's Moving Castle, it's all made of hard surface mechanical components, but it's when you get to the scale, things can start being organic. But it's important not to fully forego the mechanical parts of it and remember at, at the very least that when the texturing comes about you're going to want to make that look formed metallic and mechanical robotic you know. You can see that I'm also using a fair few booleans for this modeling project in particular with the missile pods on the side and we're just using the box cutter add-on for this but while that speeds things up for me you really do not need to use this add-on. I would say that the main body was actually despite the intricate appearance wasn't way too bad to approach because I did definitely simplify some parts of the face and kind of just focus on the details which stuck out the most because again um, it's about capturing that essence of the model that you're trying to go for and not necessarily about capturing every single detail and I will say that for this model texturing did carry a lot of that sense of making it look robotic because on the clay preview it definitely does look a little bit overly smooth and such but with some good mechanical plating textures we can fix that a little bit. You can see that I did some funny stuff with array modifier for this um, project where I actually used an array modifier to essentially take the handrail model and then arrange it in a shape that I desired so that I could have it curved over the surface of the top of the robot's head. So using modifiers to help you to create shapes and layouts that you are not comfortable creating like manually or just are very kind of tricky to create manually is a very good way to use them and it's also non-destructive up until you apply it which means that as you can see I can kind of bend and weave the shape around a little bit which is great. The legs were the most difficult part of this model and that is just because there's a lot of different components to them not just components to them but components that are actually like inside of each other and working together in a way that needs to look intentional compared to the body where there's a little bit of function there but it's mostly just form there is a lot of function with the legs and so there's this challenge of creating basically mesh cages or 
carapaces like around the hydraulics to encase them basically in a way that looks aesthetically pleasing and like the original and so that's involving a lot of bullying and setting cutting holes in meshes which is a little bit of a challenge and then basically nicely seeding cylindrical objects inside of them. Once we got out of the thigh area and got onto the sort of four legs, I actually did completely have to restart the model at some stage because I started it in a way that just wasn't going to work out in terms of the details that I needed and the shape was just completely wrong because of the amount of it that I'd done as a single mesh the topology was such that I just couldn't work with it anymore and that's something I've touched on in another video when it gets to a certain point of you spending time on something you just have to call it sometimes you just have to basically give up and say that it's going to save me time relatively if I just move on and try the whole thing from the start again because sometimes trying to save something that is like for lack of a better word cooked is going to take way more time and energy than just basically restarting from the ground up with the lessons that you've learnt about what to avoid and it ended up looking way better with the proper curvatures that I needed from the top and then the kind of like straight mechanical look on the bottom and having that contrast looks really cool on the final render and I'd say it's one of the most impressive parts and I can understand why I failed it the first time. It is a relatively complicated piece of architecture, a piece of componentry and so I'm just glad that I was able to execute it in a decent way. And then from there we're moving on to the kind of like bit which goes down into the legs which is just a lot of cylinder work, cog work, hydraulics and most of it is pretty exposed. I did scale up the kind of proportions a little bit so that the exposed hydraulics are a bit bigger than they were in the original which is a decision that I didn't intentionally make at first but I actually came to quite like it and it's fine to basically deviate a little bit from the models that you're creating especially when they're fan models of course. While this model involved a lot of different parts and all of that it was a bit less challenging because stuff didn't have to seem together quite the same. It was just like, you know, more consecutive models that would um, sit on top of each other rather than stuff that needed to go inside, rotate, interact with each other in a more intricate way. And yeah, the balls of the feet came out pretty well, and then it was just a matter of adding a lot more little modeling details around the place, such as wires, cabling, um, cylinders that would house like gases or like fuels and all of that. Not all of these were actually things that are present on the model, but I was just using my own kind of modeling intuition to add some final extra details at this point. And I think that they helped a little bit just to bring some life to areas like such as the back of the model, which I wasn't so clear on. I'd walked around in game a little bit to get a bit of a sense, but I still needed more details to kind of help me unpack what was going on back there. And now we move on to part two, which is the texturing. And I used a pretty standard set of metallic plating textures and then just UV unwrapped them in a very simple way. I had a dark metallic texture, I had a lighter metallic texture, and then I had a more sort of like golden bronzy yellow texture that was also metallic but had some different properties to it. And then of course I have my emissive textures for things like the laser eyes and for the lamps and a kind of old worn cable texture that I can use for, well, the cables essentially that are around the model and just some like dull colouring on it. And it really is just a lot of drag and drop and UV unwrap at this stage. It didn't actually take me that long, but it's just more making those decisions on what textures you are going to include, which the game has already helped us a lot because we know the colors and the kind of metallic properties. And once you've made those decisions, applying them doesn't tend to be way too hard if you're not going for perfection. But what I'm going for is just getting a really like a fitting material on them and just 80-20 rule. You know, if it looks good, it looks good, and the lighting's going to help a lot. So I moved through the stage pretty fast and into arranging the scene composition, which is part three. And what we did here is that we've just got the clouds in the background, like the reference imagery, we're taking that as inspiration even if other stuff's changing. And I've created this kind of water texture, which I actually used in a realistic water tutorial that I made a little bit ago. But we're colouring that red now and just kind of getting that salt lake look that we have on the Dan Battlegrounds map in Arc Raiders. We're taking the inspiration of having a car from the reference imagery and just placing our character in front of it, but in a slightly different position, and we don't have the second bus on the side, obviously. So we're just kind of picking and choosing what compositional ideas that we want to take and what we want to explore. And I think that it came out pretty well in the end. I think that the original source image definitely captures the tension a little bit better, just because of the sense of the queen bearing down on them, so I might work on that a little bit. Um, that kind of emotion may be lost a little bit in mine, but I think that mine still carries the sense of impressiveness and scale, just the kind of like awe of like seeing the queen like with the human to scale. And I do want to mention as well that this um, blend file is going to be up on my Ko-Fi, and so I know that there's not really like an archive server at this stage, though hopefully there will be something of the sort, but basically if you want to mess around with this queen model, 
and all that kind of stuff. I do plan on possibly rigging it in the future, but for now it is just all there and I've got a separate version with all of the modifiers mostly non-applied for this thing and the scene beside it as well. That's all just going to be in a blend file packaged on my Ko-Fi with textures pack. I also do want to shout out all of the supporters who have kept supporting me throughout the year. It just means a lot to know that you guys are getting something out of my content, so I'm looking forward to making more videos. I'm overseas right now, so content is going to be a little bit slower, and content might be a little bit different than usual as well, but I am determined to keep making some new videos throughout towards the end of the year. Thanks so much for watching, hope you guys got something out of this. It has been Yuzin, and goodbye.